Welcome, thank you so much for taking the time to join me today. My name is Bear River. I'm the Intersectional Astrologer and Reiki Master of Psyche and Soul Astrology, and it's my mission to help you remain grounded and empowered while you accelerate your growth. This week's episode of Armchair Astrology will be taking a look at the Mars-Uranus conjunction taking place at 29 degrees of Aries. We're going to be looking at what that means for us all as a collective, and we're also going to be looking at how you can use that information as a practical tool to help you up-level your creativity, your self-determination, and your own personal use of will. As always, you're going to want to stay tuned until the end of the video for the tangible takeaway so that you can really sink your teeth into this work and help to help you achieve your own personal mission. So I'm gonna show you a real quick chart of this particular conjunction, and then we're gonna dive into the video. So take a look at that, and I will be right back. The way that we're going to do this, I'll take you through the archetype in general of Uranus and Aries, Mars and Aries, what that means, and then we'll do a little bit of uh, astro history. We're going to look backwards. Now this is going to be uh, a bunch of dates that you can meditate upon and think about so that you can see what the movement of Uranus through Aries over the course of the last nine years has meant for you personally. And I'll take you through a little exercise so you can start to get a feel for how transits play out over time. Of course, Casanova, the cat that you can hear, always wants to be involved, so I'm gonna have to put him on camera too. This is Casanova the cat. Whenever you hear that little sound, that means that this guy has decided to join us or agrees or really wants you to know something. See if we can't make him happy in the window and get a little peace and quiet to finish shooting this video. All right, so far so good. It seems we might be able to do this. So we're taking a look at Uranus through Aries. Now, why would we talk about this right now? If you've been following astrology, you're probably thinking to yourself, but bear Uranus is about to be in the sign of Taurus. We're never gonna see this happen again. And I actually thought to myself that would be a perfect occasion to take a look at what this has meant to kind of demonstrate one of my favorite ways of exploring astrology personally, what it means for me, my own cycles of development, and a method that I really like to use a lot with clients as well to help figure out in the dialogue of an astrology consultation what the astrology chart actually means in your lived experience. So let's dive in real quick and take a look. So Uranus, as I said, is at the 29th, well, it's at 29 degrees of Aries, or the 30th degree of Aries, because zero is where we start, right? Now, Mars is also there conjunct Uranus. Now, Uranus being in the sign of Aries, it's actually ruled by Mars, and whenever we have a planet ruling something else and also next to it, there's an extra added oomph. And whenever we have a planet at 29 degrees of any sign, there's some extra added oomph. So this is actually a really big, intense time. I know for a lot of us over the last week as Mars has been applying, again, remember, if this is where we have our conjunction, the moon or any other planet's moving and it looks like it's close to the sun, it applies as it gets closer and it separates as it gets further away. This cat may have to be in the video. Take a look at at the overall archetype, we'll take a look at the movement of Uranus. Well, really, we'll look at how Mars has been moving through Aries, also through Scorpio, the other sign it rules, and also through Capricorn, the sign in which it's exalted, to see how that activates the timing and intensity of this nine-year now transit of Uranus moving through the sign of Aries. Uh, that's that's going to be the bulk of it. I'll give you a few little questions as we go along through the years to help you kind of sink your teeth into some metaphors that can help you make meaning out of what's been going on. But it's really going to be um, this video is more for you to take the information and really work with it at home. So in a sense, the video itself is the tangible takeaway. But of course, as with every video, I'm going to give you a tangible takeaway way at the end so you're gonna wanna stay tuned until the end of the video for that or always take a look down in the description box for some timestamps. So now the archetype as a whole, the fundamental archetype, we want to look at Uranus. Now of course Uranus is associated with the Greek sky god Oranos. However, I'm of the astrological camp that looks to um, Richard Tarnas's work 
and I really sense hearing him speak about Uranus and associating Uranus with the god Prometheus. I see that as fitting a lot more closely with the function, with the processes that Uranus has to do with in astrology and also the timing of Uranus transits on the world stage. That's mundane astrology. So if we think back to the time period in which Uranus was discovered, there's a lot of revolutions going on. Also, there was a lot of scientific breakthrough going on and that's two of the big things that we see with Uranus, the two big associations, revolution and technology, right? And also there's the suddenness in the same way that electricity is instantaneous. The speed of light is actually the speed of of causality itself. The instant where something is taking place, Uranus kind of holds that spot. Now, there were two points that I wanted to make about this Prometheus connection and Uranus's archetype, because I think it really makes a beautiful point of how as, you know, as mixed people or as intersectionally minded folks, we can really find a lot of different opportunities for these archetypes to be at work in a lot of different places where I thought to myself as someone of Alaskan native origin, and also with a lot of Scandinavian in my lineage, I thought, huh, there are two figures that I know of off the top of my head that sound a lot like Prometheus. So if we think about Prometheus, he's a titan, he's the one that stole fire and gave fire to humanity, and then he got punished forever and eternity of being chained to a rock in a cave and having his liver eaten out every single day only to grow back and have it happen all over again. And I thought, huh, that sounds an awful lot like a certain figure in Norse mythology who was known for stealing things, punished by being chained to a rock and having snake venom dripped into his eye every day for eternity. There's now in Norse mythology, I'm talking about Loki. And if you look into Old Norse, the language itself, we find that Logi, L-O-G-I, is a word that has to do with fire. I really just want to point out that there is a similarity in terms of, you know, Loki is a mischievous god who steals things, but he is also the Jotun, the giant god, who is the one who got the, uh, got the dwarves to create the first magical objects of the gods. And so that got me thinking about, huh, there's something to do with technology and a stealing of insight or stealing of knowledge or wisdom from the gods that seems to correlate astrologically and mythologically with te technological development. So there's the one, Loki and Prometheus. And then the second one before we dig into the dates that might help some other folks really access this archetype is Raven. Raven, as in one of the most sacred beings, depending on which tribes or nations we're talking about, but in my Alaskan native culture, Raven is the animal which represents creator, the creator. Or if we think about certain, certain stories of indigenous folks who originate and who are right around the southeast uh, chain of islands in Alaska or or um, the inland side of the islands of British Columbia, coastal British Columbia, some of the Salish peoples or salmon peoples. They have a story of raven stealing the sun. So there again we have an association with a great mythical being who steals technology for the benefit of humanity. So those are the two kind of connections that I want to make, just two different ways that we can think of Uranus as Prometheus, as the awakener, liberator, technological deity, who's also a bit of a trickster. And we can look to kind of more modern astrological thinking that holds Uranus to be the higher octave of Mercury, who is definitely a trickster god in Greek mythology. So we can move forward to talk about what all this archetypal stuff means for us practically. What does it mean for us mere mortals down on Earth? For most of us alive today, we will never see Uranus in Aquarius again. We'll never see Mars ruling Uranus, conjunct Uranus. Well, maybe in Scorpio if you want to look at it that way, but that's still a very long way off. For a lot of us, this is really the last hurrah of a Martian type of Uranus transit. In Aries, what is, what is Uranus doing? Now, Uranus is the process of awakening right, of enlightenment. It's the aha, eureka moment of insight, the flash of genius. Now, Aries has to do with the process of individuation. So going from being indistinguishable from our mothers in the womb to being born and developing our own personalities and being our own actual human, 
right? So we're thinking about a Uranus way of doing Aries. That's what's been going on at its most fundamental level for all of us. That's been going on since about 2010. Now, we're heading up on Taurus. By the end of this month, Uranus will be in Taurus. It's never gonna go back into Aries again. We'll have a whole different vibe. And just to contrast it, since we're right on that threshold where we will really be able to feel what Uranus was doing in Aries as we begin to perceive what Uranus will be doing in Taurus, I wanna check in with that Uranus in Taurus. We'll just say that Uranus in Taurus is gonna be awakening us up to processes that have to do with food, with how we interact with the environment. Everything that has to do with the way that we as humans interact with the environment to get our food, clothes, and shelter is gonna be up. It's gonna be disrupted for the purpose of our awakening. In the same way that so much having to do with ourselves, our personalities, like our individual ego identities has been disrupted continuously <laughs> over the course of the last nine years in order for us to individuate, to develop our assertion of will, to distinguish that from aggressively attempting to dominate through the use of power. So we're gonna dig deeper into these Uranus Aries themes and see how Mars has been kind of picking up the themes, the stories, the events, and acting to agitate that transformation that's been taking place. So with Mars being the ruler of Uranus since 2010, there's been an added quality of like activity, right? An active quality to this Uranus process that's taking place. And that really colors the way that we have all been called to respond to these Uranian disruptions, whether they're synchronicity, synch synchronicity, whether it's serendipitous or some other type of thing. There's these fateful, sudden surprise events that are happening that are really profoundly shaping the way that we act, shaping the way that we harness our will. So the big thing that I see is that over the course of the last nine years, we have all been compelled to act in some way. It's not an internal, emotional, like Scorpio style, inner psychological process where we're receiving information and integrating it. It's a very outward, projected type of energy. The other thing is that we've all been confronted. Again, Mars rules like war and combat, right? So what is confrontation? But a little battle in miniature. It's a very Mars thing. So we've all been confronted with the need to liberate ourselves, right? To liberate ourselves from whatever is holding us back from being authentically ourselves. And then the last thing, again, this is the Mars aspect, right? As these disruptions have been taking place, we've all been called to defend ourselves, defend the things that really make us who we are. And to sometimes defend ourselves against the will and power and dominance of others. So that's the general archetypal gist, right? We've got this impulse for liberation and awakening that has to do with ourselves. And because Mars is involved, it's been all about this fine line between, between assertion and aggression, between dominance and power, between willpower and willfulness, between confrontation right and combativeness you got to confront things but you don't have to combat them right and then finally between separation and separatism so those are a few of the things that i see going on um let's look now at where where and also when to look for clues as to what this uranus through aries ruled by mars means for you specifically personally the keeping it simple version, you're going to look at where 29 degrees of Aries is. That's where Uranus is now, that's where Mars is now. This is gonna tell you where, what, what area of your life is most activated by the transit. So again, with the houses, like first house is yourself, your, you. The second house is your resources, your inner resources like talents and skills, and then also your values, and to a certain extent, your body, like physically feeding your body so it exists as a material thing. Third house is communication. On and on down the list, I'll drop a little quick explanation down there and I'll make a point to shoot you a video to talk a little bit more about the houses as their own thing. 
but you're going to look to the house where that transit is active and that's going to tell you what area of life to look at right now for a lot of people it could be the same house so maybe work has been highlighted consistently for the last nine years or it could have been two houses maybe it was creativity and then it morphed into work at some point but that's the really, really simple, simple way. And this is the area of your life that's been disrupted for the sake of your development, for the sake of your ability to learn how to assert your will, for the sake of your ability to be truly authentic. Now, I said before, and I'll run it by again, because Uranus uses serendipity and synchronicity and disruption, and because it's an Aries agitation, all for the purpose of getting us to change, erode the structures that no longer work, right? Uranus comes after the foundation making, the structure building of Saturn, and Uranus explodes all the shit that don't work no more. So this is where you have really been called to find that middle point, the balance between assertion and aggression, confrontation and combativeness, willpower versus the desire for dominance or power over others these types of things now if you are an enthusiastic and confident beginner or if you're an intermediate student of astrology or if you're just doggedly determined to do it your damn self all the more power to you you are going to want to look not just at where 29 degrees of aries is you're going to want to look and see which house cusp has aries on it so which house is started by the sign of Aries in your chart? You're also gonna wanna look and see where Uranus is in your natal chart, that's your birth chart, where Mars is in your birth chart. Because these areas of your life will be really heavily influenced and impacted by these last nine years of Uranus moving through the sign of Aries. So to give you an example, if you have say Uranus transiting your 11th house of friends and of hopes and dreams or dreams and aspirations, but Uranus is in your sixth house natally, and Mars is in your third house natally, then that means that this disruption that's taking place or the serendipity and synchronicity that occurs through your friends and through, through striving to achieve your hopes and dreams is heavily influenced by or has something to do with work and with the media or with communication and employees or with your small pets and communication as is the case right down there right now you want to look to those different areas and just think about those areas of life as you listen to and consider these dates you can blend all of these things together or you can just think about well you can blend all these things together and think about everything that has occurred to you since 2010 or you can think about just one instance and how that particular event has progressed in terms of like cause and effect and chain of events over time, over the course of this transit to see what it means for you. Now again, I offer private, con private astrological consultations and Reiki healing among other things. So if you are interested in some sort of metaphysical mentoring, some sort of empowerment coaching to work with this information so that you can do for self and help yourself, feel free to reach out to me. I'll drop a link down below so that you can book a consultation really easily. So now we're gonna look at the dates. This is the bulk of the video and uh, encourage you to write it down. I'll do my best to just put them up on the screen so you can read them, put them down in the description box. I'll maybe write a little blog post so it's a little easier to read this out long format if you want that. Uh, without further ado, let's go through some of these dates and then I'll give you the tangible takeaway. Uranus first moves in. The initial ingress is from May 28th of 2010 to August 14th of 2010. Now this is right before Uranus pops back into Pisces for the very last time in the same way that we've had happen over the course of this last year. Uranus has already touched Taurus territory. It's actually back again for the last time in the sign of Aries. Now I want to use the Mars conjunctions to illustrate some timing and we'll see how quickly I can get through this for your benefit here. Now, I want you to keep in mind that what Mars and Uranus are doing in your natal chart will color this a, get, a bit, which is why I gave you that kind of advanced way to look at your chart, because those areas will be highlighted and they'll even influence the way this transit plays out. 
So the next date that we have is March 12th of 2011. That's when Uranus moves into Aries for the last time. That's the final ingress, we could say. Um, this is really what sets the stage. So I want you to think back. This is when there is something that is now like an initial disruption, an initial event that is setting the stage for your own kind of continual roller coastery, serendipity, unexpected random shit is making me more me type of time over the last nine years. Now, Uranus, sorry, Mars is really close to Uranus at this point already on April 4th. So not but a couple weeks after Uranus moves into the sign of Aries for the last time we have the first conjunction with Mars. So we get a lot of extra power here to the beginning of the sign of Aries. So there's even more like almost as much oomph as there is right now at the very final degree of Aries. And you probably had an inkling before, like I can feel the the tremors and there's an earthquake a coming, but the earthquake probably hit April 4th of 2011. What started for you back then? Was there a fateful event that totally changed your life trajectory? You're probably only able to see that now in retrospect. So let's use that 2020 hindsight to crack into this and figure out how you can prepare for Uranus moving through Taurus and really integrate and harness all of the power that you have drummed up and created over the course of this last year. Now, late August through September of 2012, Mars was in Scorpio, another sign it rules, where Mars in Aries is the <clears throat> the initial burst, the fire, the catalyst. Mars in in Scorpio is the passion, is where we could get obsessively defensive or really aggressive, but it's where we get the emotional integration part. And then we move to mid-November to late December of 2012. This is when Mars is, ex is exalted in the sign of Capricorn. Now, because Mars is strong and it's also squaring Uranus from Capricorn, we get more action and the action is directed towards stabilizing. So we have this threefold initiate, integrate, stabilize. And we'll see this pattern play out about four or five times over the course of these nine years. So I'll give you these other dates real quick because I want you to really take away the tangible takeaway. So March 12th, 2013 through April 20th of 2013, we're back to a Mars and Aries. So now you might be able to see a pattern emerge or a particular area of your life where it keeps coming up. July 26, 2014 through September of 2014, we're back into the Scorpio phase. So what are you feeling most passionate about then? Was there something that you needed to defend and are there any really big changes that are the result of massive disruptions on the internal level? By the end of that year, October through early December 2014, Mars is back in Capricorn. So there's the second wave of stabilizing things. What have you been determinedly soldiering through? Have you been strategically implementing something as Mars is moving through and activating this Uranus transit? And are there any structural changes in your life as a result of this chain of events that started off back in 2010, 2011? By mid 20, early 2015, like February through March of 2015, Mars is now in Aries for the third time. So another cycle of disruption or synchronicity or, or serendipity. How is 2010 setting this up? What's the connection? And how did the drive to make something solid back in October and December of the year before set up this time period? And we're gonna keep using that pattern for January 23rd of 2016 through March 6th of 2016. Mars is back in Scorpio, so we're a third time. What are the feelings that are happening here? September through November 9th of 2016, a hard time for a lot of us for unnameable, unspeakable reasons. Mars is now exalted in Capricorn again. There's some solidity and stability and some tangible realness to what's happening. And that pops us off into January 28th, 2017 through March 2017. Mars is in Aries for the fourth time now. So we're back again to this initiating, catalyzing time period after we've had five years now of seeing something kind of starting to be destroyed or burned down or exploded in our lives and then we have feelings about it and then we try to do something with it and then boom it gets exploded again this is the pattern by the end of that year december 9th through to the beginning of january of last year mars is now back in scorpio again we're getting some real intensity with our feelings we're probably having some fallout with our feelings about 2016 in a real serious way this brings us to march to may of 2018 where Mars is back in Capricorn again and we're gonna get a touch of that twice 
in 2018, remember last year, Mars went retrograde in the sign of Aquarius, which is rare as fuck. Um, also meant we got the brightest Mars in a 60,000 year period or the second brightest in a 60,000 year period, which really says this heightened relationship here is really important, really important for our overall development, awakening, our up leveling as a whole, like civilization. And then that actually brings us to now. Last year, we ended out Mars being in Capricorn, Mars zoomed through Aquarius, through to Pisces, and now here we are. It was actually January the 1st that Mars moved back into Aries. It will leave the sign of Aries on February the 14th. So from New Year's to Valentine's Day is our last little hurrah of Mars ruling Aries. So do you think that there's any significance in this particular coincidence of timing that we go from the first day of our New Year's resolution to the first day that we make our, you know, on a holiday sort of cultural level, we're about relationships. I want to think about that. And it actually made me think about Brene Brown, right? This time period is when I think a lot of us learned about braving the wilderness and daring greatly. And that daring greatly book is actually based on the man in the arena speech from Teddy Roosevelt that he gave at the Savoy April 23rd of 1910, when the sun, Mercury and Saturn were all in Aries. Uranus was in the sign of Capricorn. Again, that makes it ruled by Saturn who is ruled by Aries. So we see that there is this theme that's carried through in all these subtle ways. So your tangible takeaway, and this is one that I really want you to integrate with the Aquarius new moon challenge and the Venus and Capricorn questions, right? So the Aquarius new moon challenge was to look at any upsetting event or any disruption and look at the event your feelings about it and your stories about it as separate things so that you can see what you truly choose to respond with in that event. And then the Venus questions were based, Venus and Capricorn questions were based on your Venus sign. So I'll drop a link for that video. There are timestamps in the description so you can just zoom ahead to your specific question, that bonus challenge if you want. The bonus challenge was to do a values inventory or a values assessment. So the way that this all comes together, I want you to use these dates to look back over the last nine years, what sequence of events totally disrupted your life, changed it fundamentally and put you in a totally different direction. That's more authentic. That's a truer expression of your will. That's a truer expression of your creative genius. What events took place? Can you step back with the 2020 hindsight and really see what happened is different from your feeling about it? from your feeling about the story you have about it and the responses that you had in each and every one of those instances because they will illuminate the values you have chosen to be a stand for. And that's gonna be really crucial as we move through this Uranus and Taurus time to be clear about the values that we stand for because they do actually make up the fabric, the very material of who we are. So that's it. It's kind of a longer video than I had maybe anticipated. We'll see on the editing room floor. I will work to get all that information in the video so it's as easy for you as possible. I know it's a lot, so if you've got questions, please feel free. Drop your questions down in the comment section below. You can hit me up on Instagram, on Twitter, on Facebook even if you want to. Uh, shoot me an email if you like. I always include my email in the descriptions. I would love to hear from you. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, down over here, smash on the notification bell, show me a little social media love. It really helps with the algorithms and with growing this business. Of course, if you'd like a consultation, I'm really happy to work with you and make it happen. I'm sure we can reach an arrangement if for whatever reason you need some sort of alternative construction for that. Thank you very much again for your time, for checking out this video. This has been Armchair Astrology, episode four, taking a look at Uranus moving through Aries. I'm your host, Bear River, intersectional astrologer and Reiki master of Psyche and Soul Astrology. Until we meet again, many blessings to y'all, all the love in the world to you. Keep your head up and stay strong.